Hi, my name is Mary Vukisevich and this lecture is about the classification of cataract. There are a few different ways that cataracts can be classified and one of those is according to their etiology or their cause. And as you can see in the figure here, the top row represents all the different etiologies um, that can cause cataracts. So we have age-related cataracts, congenital cataracts, traumatic, drug-induced, or cataracts associated with systemic disease, and then secondary cataracts. And these cataracts are associated with another ocular disease, and it's the other ocular disease that causes the, the cataract to occur. Most lens opacities, i.e. cataracts, exist either in the outermost region or the deepest region of the lens. And if we start by having a look at age-related cataracts first, these are described or classified by the zone of the lens involved. And so there are three subcategories. We have subcapsular cataract, cortical cataract, and nuclear cataract. So let's take a closer look at these before we move on to any other etiological types. So I'm going to go through age-related cataracts under these three categories, subcapsular, cortical, or nuclear. Let's have a look first at the subcapsular cataracts. Now, on the right-hand side is a schematic diagram of the lens itself. And you can see in the middle we have the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by the cortex and then we have the capsule. So uh, be familiar with these locations because it's very important in terms of the location of the cataract. So subcapsular cataracts occur in the capsule and they can be divided by um, anterior and posterior um, location. So an anterior subcapsular cataract lies directly under the lens capsule, while the posterior subcapsular cataract lies just in front of the posterior capsule. Now, because of its location at the nodal point of the eye, a posterior subcapsular cataract will often have quite a severe effect on a patient's vision. And a patient will complain of glare for example, if they've got their driving and headlights are coming towards them from oncoming cars or sunlight is streaming through the car window, they'll, they'll say that that's very glary. Um, and their symptoms of glare are increased by meiosis. So when the pupil constricts, it makes matters worse. And this happens, of course, under bright lighting conditions. The, the pupil constricts and um, uh, meiosis occurs and then the glare gets worse. On the picture uh, on the left, you can see the subcapsular cataract in the sort of brownie areas that are that look like they're um, a little bit forward compared to the rest of the eye's lens. Subcapsular cataracts are graded according to their severity as you're looking at them from the front of the eye. And this severity ranges from one, which is a mild subcapsular cataract all the way through to four, which is a, a subcapsular cataract which spreads all the way across the lens, um, as shown in this schematic diagram. Now I've just brought in the image from the previous slide of the subcapsular cataract. If we have a look at this according to its grading um, and severity, I think um, a number one subcapsular cataract has just got a few speckles there but a number two takes up a little bit more of the lens and I think that this cataract here is probably uh, a grade two in severity. A grade three cataract takes up more uh, of the space, it pretty much uh, occupies the whole area that you can see through the pupil and then a grade four is even more severe, takes up the whole lens. So in this case, I would say probably this one uh, could be graded as a grade two subcapsular cataract. As I said previously, you can also um, classify these as anterior and posterior subcapsular, but I think for your purposes, it's not something that you'll be required to do. You will be, however, required to understand what a subcapsular cataract looks like.
The next type of age-related cataract that I'll talk about is a nuclear cataract. And a nuclear cataract is an exaggeration of the normal aging change. These type of cataracts are often associated with myopia due to an increase in the refractive index of the nucleus. And this results in some older patients being able to read without their glasses again because they become myopic. And then, um, you know, when they're looking at things close up, they, um, they can see them quite clearly without glasses at all. Now, nuclear cataracts, of course, uh, occur in the nucleus of the lens. And again, have a look at the um, schematic diagram on the right-hand side for your location there. And they're often cat categorized or characterized by this yellowish hue. They have a yellowish color. And this gets a stronger color as the, as the cataract advances and then eventually can actually appear quite brown. And you can see on the left there, the nuclear cataract, um, it looks quite orangey yellow uh, through the pupil there. A very simple classification system of grading nuclear cataracts was developed by Piri back in the 1960s and it classes the uh, lens into different categories depending on uh, the, the color of the nucleus and you can see a category one nuclear cataract is is a fairly light yellow color transparent. Um, you can see the uh, crosshatch behind it indicating that it's not taking up too much space. Then um, it, they move on to a much more severe uh, color and then eventually brown. So they become more yellow and more orange as the um, grade gets higher. And the last type of age-related cataract is a cortical cataract, and of course these are found in the cortex of the lens. And they are very easy to spot because cortical cataracts develop this spoke-like appearance, particularly as they mature. And the first spokes usually appear in the inferior nasal quadrant of the lens. And Quite similarly to posterior subcapsular cataracts, the, the patients do complain of quite severe glare when they have cortical cataracts. Now, the cataract shown there on the left, um, you can see the spokes quite clearly on the, on the left-hand side there, um, streaming towards the middle. Cortical cataracts can also be uh, classified according to their severity and it depends on how severe the spoke appearance is as you're viewing it from the front. So this schematic diagram shows the right eye and classification one relates to the start of a cataract in the inferior nasal section of the lens. It eventually spreads to the whole inferior part of the lens and so on until the whole lens is occupied by the cataract and this is then assigned a grade four classification. Here's a good example of a grade four cortical cataract. You can see these spokes radiating from the center outwards um, in the lens and they occupy the whole entire lens of the eye. So that's a grade four cortical cataract. Now, of course, to complicate things, a patient doesn't just present sometimes with one type of cataract, for example, not just a, a, a nuclear or not just a cortical, but sometimes they can have cataract of different regions. And so this is then a mixed classification. So on the left-hand side, um, it shows a posterior subcapsular cataract, and there's also uh, a nuclear cataract there, which is a grade three classification because of because of its um, because of its coloring quite orange color there on the right hand side we also have a nuclear cataract quite orangey and in addition to that a cortical cataract because you can actually see some spokes through there as well on that lens and um, those spokes are in that inferior nasal quadrant uh, as well so just, uh, apart from the etiology for classification of cataract, uh, cataracts can also be classified by their stage of development. And the classification can be immature, 
mature, hypermature, or Morganian. So an immature cataract is where the lens has developed some opacities, but these are still separated by areas of normal clear lens. A mature cataract will have a completely opaque lens. A hypermature cataract is when the lens and the capsule become smaller and wrinkled, and that's due to the leakage of fluid out of the lens. And a Morganian cataract is similar to a hypermature cataract in which the lens's central portion sinks and becomes liquefied. I'm going to show you some pictures of these in a moment. So here's an example of a, a mature cataract and, and it has a completely opaque lens there. You can see it's, the whole lens is completely cloudy for this patient. This image shows a hypermature cataract and, and the biggest telling feature here is that it's very, very white as it's shining back through uh, as you're viewing the cataract from the front of the eye. And this one here is classified as a Morganian and this is where the cataract is uh, hypermature but the central portion has sunk in and become quite liquefied and I think that's much more evident when you're look, actually looking at the patient um, on front view. So in summary, as we come to the end of this lecture, cataracts can be easily classified according to their etiology or their maturity. So if we classify them against their etiology, we can have age-related cataracts, congenital, traumatic, drug-induced, cataracts which are associated with systemic disease, and then secondary cataracts which are associated with another ocular condition. And if we classify them by maturity, they can be immature, mature, hypermature, or Morganian.